Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. This video is an addition to the miscellaneous series. We frequently update our miscellaneous series with several new videos. In all the videos of the miscellaneous series, we talk about different interdisciplinary models. And if you are working in interdisciplinary research, then this particular series will be helpful and I would request you to go through all the videos we have uploaded. I'll put the link in the description box and you will get all the videos through that link. Before I start today's discussion, which is on phase transfer, that is a particular phase, say water is going to evaporate and it is from liquid state to going to the vapor state and how exactly we tackle that, that we'll be talking about. But before going to that, I would like to inform that we have started a service where you can actually write to us. I'll put my email in the description box. And if you write to us, we'll give you a video call. And through the video call, we'll support to model, to develop your model. So you can write to me and I will get back to you. So let us uh, go ahead with today's discussion, which is on phase transfer. So we visually, I mean to say, you can think there is a glass visually, glass or any container on in, inside the container, say you have a water and at the surface, and this is air basically, and at the interface, the mass transfer can take place. Mass transfer means from the water medium, vapor can come out and it can go into the air medium. So this water medium is not taking any role in our simulation. That is why I have made it void because this is not required for the simulation. But you can visualize the surface is active and through the surface, if you define a flux or a generation of vapor, that vapor will go to the air and it will change the vapor density in the air. So in terms of humidity, we can talk about. So it will increase the humidity if there is an evaporation. There might be condensation as well. If there is condensation, then from the air, the evapor from the air, the water molecules can come to the water surface and it can actually reduce the humidity. So this is how the physical problem is and we have to model it. For this particular model, we have to use moisture in transport, moisture transport in air and in general, the moisture transport is guided by temperature because we know the saturated vapor pressure or partial pressure of any vapor in air is directly correlated with the temperature. So if you just re rewind your thermodynamics, you can remember how exactly it is related. I'm not going into the details of thermodynamics for this particular video, but I just talked about it so that you can recall. So for that, whenever you deal with moisture transport in air, you should always take the heat transfer in moist air. So those are the two physics which are necessary to build your model and we'll be actually working with this so we have already simulated it. So initially I will show you the result and after that I will develop the model and we will show you slowly. Okay, the model is not uh, run yet. So let us develop and run it and then only I'll show you the simulation result. So here these two physics are required. This one is under chemical species transport. You can see under chemical species transport, you have a subgroup which is moisture transport and in moisture transport, you have those options. I'll talk about all the things one by one, but in today's video, I'm talking about moisture transport in air. So that we have to take care. We have to be added for in the module and you, we have this one heat, uh, heat transfer through moist air. So these two physics we have to take, we can put add here. So while you click on add, you know, it will be added in the physics interface once we are. Yeah. So one thing you can check whenever we added moisture, then you, you can see 
one multiphysics automatically added that multiphysics is your heat and moisture multiphysics so we go to study click on done okay uh, we have to take time dependent we can take later on so we have this moist air so this is on uh, taken twice twice it is not required i am deleting it so we have this moisture transport in air and we have this heat transfer in air moist air so now let us go ahead with centimeter range we take one square say the dimension is one centimeter yeah we duplicate it take the dimension 1.2 for this one we shift the position in the x direction 0.1 so that it becomes at the middle so this is the bigger one it should be the smaller one make it 0.8 yeah so this geometry we wanted to have and we have actually created the geometry now we have to remove this particular portion for that we can actually use difference operator we, we have already talked about this in our geometry series I'll also put the geometry series in the description box so that you can have a look into that so we choose the difference operator so the difference between the bigger one and the smaller one so if we click on build object so this is directed because we have taken a difference and this is our solution space so we have actually generated our solution space by the geometry now let us put the material the material will be air so it should be there in the recent material because we have worked on it it's not showing anyway so we can search by air so once you search it will look for air yeah it is here so air gas so that I, we have to take so we have taken it is chosen in this solution space now we go to the moist air in the moist air what we need to do we need to define if you right click you can see those are the options available we have moisture source that also you can give because sometimes the water may not be coming from the what i mean the vapor may not be coming from the water surface sometimes you may have a situation where a wet cloth is kept inside a room say and from the wet cloth there will be evaporation and moisture which will be getting and uh, it will be coming out so in that case you can use a moisture source as well so depending upon your physical problem the boundary conditions may be different here you can see you have evaporation condensation options so from evaporation we take a wet surface option and this is our wet surface because I have told you to visualize this as a container where water is kept and that will be the surface of the water so th that will be always the wet surface and what is happening at the wet surface from the wet surface evaporation is taking place so this is the factor so there will be an equation for the mass transfer i will talk about those technical details in the upcoming videos but for the time being you just visualize a mass transfer is taking place from that interface and it has a certain flux or certain rate and that rate or that flux is proportional to some constant and that constant is k here so in a layman language if we have higher k will have higher evaporation for the time being let us put an arbitrary value say 0.1 that could be a very high value but for learning purpose let us put it as 0.1 so we have actually given the source the source of the vapor water vapor which is coming out let us see yeah this is the moist air there is no convection we have not taken any convection that's why this u is kept as zero you can see the equation so this is nothing but there is the mass transfer equation integrated with the transport species equation 
I'll talk about these equations in detail in the upcoming videos, but today we are our main idea is to show how to model in COMSOL. So then what we can do is we can actually go to the heat transfer and in the heat transfer we can actually define different temperature at those surfaces just to define I'll right click and I'll take temperature here say the interface it says boiled water so we can change the temperature of the interface say if the water is boiled somehow we maintain the temperature say at 100 degree around 373 Kelvin and let us keep other temperatures say those two are ambient temperature and the other walls may be kept at zero temperature okay the right wall is not chosen yeah I have chosen now so this is how the physical simple physical scenario we are trying to explain so let us look at the equation which we are solving again you can see this is a generic heat equation where you have this this one is the diffusive term or conducting term conductive term this one you can see you have an u so this is the convective term but in this case or u is zero because there is no convection so it will be zero for this particular case and there are multiple other factors multiple other terms which are basically signifying different things and as I am telling in this video I am not explaining all those things but we need to know all those things in the next video we will be coming with those detailed options so more or less most of the things are defined I guess let me try to do the meshing so let us take the triangular mesh size we can take from normal to say finer let us click on build all finer is not good let me go ahead with extra fine it's okay for the time being so let me check whether we have defined all the options which we have started with you can see here we initially did where wet surface was defined okay there could be one inflow outflow as well because uh, there might be a situation where air is flowing and due to the air flow there might be some condition of inflow and outflow there might also not be any inflow outflow let us initially try with a stagnant condition like this is a, this is a kind of closed surface where there is no inflow outflow I hope this will work let us see and run the simulation okay uh, let me talk about this this is the multi physics why the multi physics is there because we have given a temperature at the surface that temperature actually defines how exactly evaporation will take place and that is why both the physics should be coupled and this coupling is doing the same thing okay we have not taken study let us go to study click on study take the time dependent one I have a rough estimation of the time scale so I am putting maximum 0.1 second right clicking on it and getting the initial value steps so that we get the default results so I have right clicked so it is getting the default result relative humidity temperature and all so now it is good time to run the simulation finger crossed I don't know whether it will work or not let's see I have clicked on the button compute so I guess simulation will run yeah it has started simulating yeah the simulation is done so now we can see how exactly relative humidity will change so this is at zero time this is how it is you can see at the interface we have a highest moisture obviously it will be there because we have water surface here now if we change the time we are increasing the time step you can see this is how your evaporation is taking place and it is increasing the humidity look at this time at this frame 
this is basically relative humidity it was at predefined condition it was at 0.5 initially so initial value was taken as 0.5 yeah here it is defined so initially it was at 0.5 so it started from 0.5 and as you progress it you can see the values it is increasing it depends on the evaporation rate and it can actually go up to a higher value so you can see but as it is relative humidity it can never be more than one that is why it is becoming maximum one and as the time progresses the the mass transfer is taking place so in the upper space we are gradually getting higher humidity you can also run a quick animation for animation <clears throat> you have to right click on export there is an option of animation player so here you have to click you can see this is how your humidity is increasing mass transfer is happening we can run again yeah so now i was talking about inflow and outflow so this is a closed condition your condition might be little bit different you may have an inlet where air is coming through it you may have an outlet so due to the air flow that time you have to define a laminar flow you have to couple the laminar flow with the mass transfer because i talked about it in the mass transfer you have this u term this one the convective term once you run you flow here your convective term starts so this u you have to solve from the laminar flow and you have to plug in here so you have additional laminar flow you have additional flow coupling and all those things you have to be taken care of very seriously so this was the initial level video where you just learned about how exactly we can take care of the phase transfer so many people wrote to me asking about the phase transfer so as I have mentioned here, we can have phase transfer for water and water vapor. But the thing is, uh, in your case, it could be other material. So what you need to do in this same physics only, if you, if you change those parameters, I mean the values like uh, if, you, if I show here, there is a certain uh, relation and that relation can be modulated by changing this k values so for water k values will be different for say alcohol it will be different so by changing the values you may actually model different materials you may actually have the information of phase transfer at least liquid to vapor phase transfer you can model in comsol i am not aware of solid to liquid but I look into it and maybe in the upcoming days I will work on it and upload few more videos. So today I stop here. We will be continuing with this particular phase transfer and we will have more videos on it. Till then uh, I would like to tell you to I would like to request you to subscribe to our channel because if you subscribe if you help us then we will get more motivation to upload new videos. Thank you.